the history of the Saudi state and the Saudi dynasty really becomes interesting in 1744. In the town of Diria, which is very close to the modern city of Riyadh, in the region of the Arabian Peninsula known as the Nejd, and the Nejd is an important term to know if you're studying Saudi Arabia because this central region of the Arabian Peninsula is really the stronghold of the House of Saud. But Diria was a successful town in the early 18th century, but the emir of Diria, Muhammad bin Saud, forges an alliance with a religious leader, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. And that alliance is a very strong one. Muhammad bin Saud's son marries Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab's daughter to really seal that alliance. And the Wahhabis could be viewed as a fundamentalist sect of Sunni Islam. And with that purest religious fervor, this alliance is very successful. Over the next several decades, you have the Emirate of Diria continuing to grow, first conquering much of the Nejd and Eastern Arabia, and then as we go into the early 19th century, as we go into the early 1800s, conquers Western Saudi Arabia and much of the territory you would now associate with the modern Saudi state. Now of note is that they conquered the western portion of the Arabian Peninsula known as the Hejaz. And the reason why this is significant, you have to remember the context. At this time, the Ottoman Empire, with Constantinople as its capital, was nominally in control of most of the Middle East, including Egypt and the Arabian Peninsula. But all of a sudden, you have this emirate that starts off in Diria and now is able to conquer a big chunk of the Arabian Peninsula, including two of the holiest places in all of Islam. On top of that, the emir of Diria and the Wahhabi religious leaders say that the ruler of the Ottoman Empire, the Sultan Mustafa IV, is not the valid leader of Islam, that he is not the true caliph of Islam. On top of that, in 1802, an estimated 12,000 Wahhabis go to Karbala and sack the city. They destroy the shrine of Hussein, who is a revered figure amongst Shia Muslims, and they kill an estimated up to four or 5,000 people. And Karbala is also under Ottoman control. So the Ottomans are not happy about this. You have a fundamentalist sect of Islam in the Wahhabis controlling most of the Arabian Peninsula, including the holiest sites in all of Islam. They're saying that the Ottoman rulers, the Sultan, is not the true caliph of Islam. And on top of that, they're causing internal strife within the Ottoman Empire with the Shias by sacking Karbala. To make things even more complicated for the Ottomans, in Egypt you have another leader who's trying to exercise his autonomy in Muhammad Ali. And so the Ottomans have a plan. Why don't we get Muhammad Ali to send some of his troops to focus on the Emirate of Diria? And so they order Muhammad Ali to take on the Emirate of Diria, and this is what becomes the Ottoman Wahhabi War. Now by the time the war is in full swing, the Sultan in Constantinople is Mahmud II. Muhammad Ali sends his sons, who are eventually successful in taking back Mecca, Medina, and then they lay siege to the town of Diria and they're eventually able to take it in 1818. They send the leaders of the House of Saud and the Wahhabis to Constantinople, including the current emir at the time, Abdullah bin Saud. And just to get a sense of the family tree up to this point, this is Abdullah, who is the last emir of the Emirate of Diria, who gets captured by the Egyptian forces on behalf of the Ottomans. You can see he is the great-grandson of Muhammad bin Saud. Bin Saud means Muhammad, son of Saud. So the whole dynasty is named after Saud, who was a previous emir of Diria. But Muhammad bin Saud is the one who really formed that alliance with the Wahhabis, which enabled the Emirate of Diria to become a major power in the Arabian Peninsula, eventually taking over over most of the peninsula. Abdullah was sentenced to death in Constantinople, but before he was beheaded, he was forced to listen to lute music, because according to the Wahhabis, that was considered sacrilege, while the Ottomans had no problem with it. So they were really trying to rub it in, that before you die, you're going to have to do something that you, the Wahhabis, view as sacrilege. But I will leave you there. As we will see, the Emirate of Diria is the first of three major Saudi states that will each control most of the Arabian Peninsula. In the next video, we're going to see the Saudi state come back with the Emirate of Nejd. And in blue here, you see the rulers of the Emirate of Nejd. 
And then after that, we will talk about the modern kingdom of Saudi Arabia, whose rulers you see here in green. And we'll go into a lot more depth than that. But you can see that they all are descendant from Muhammad bin Saud.